Welcome back to the next section in the series. So in this section, we basically want to set up our authorization server in a way that clients can be registered dynamically. Okay. The shortcomings of what we have so far is um the fact that we define three register clients for different case scenario. So let us assume that we have an application an authorization server we want to ensure that we are able to plug clients dynamically so if we come right here and start creating new clients our code base is definitely going to be long so we want to avoid that issue so what we'll have to do now is provide an implementation so that we get this data from the database so this is going to take quite some time what i'll just do is implement the logic myself then i'll walk you through the changes I've made to the application as a whole. So just stay tuned, relax, and when I'm done, I'm going to walk you through all of the process and all of the changes. So right now, I've um, provided implementation for our register client repository. And you can see that this is pretty much inside of a package I called implementation and IMPL for short. So let us take a look at a couple of changes I have made so far to our code base. So inside of the pom.xml file, I included a couple of um, dependency. I included Lombok, Postgres SQL for the um, DBMS management. And then I also included Spring Data JPA for data accessing. And inside of the application of the properties file, I pretty much provided the necessary configuration in order for us to make use of our Postgres SQL DB. And finally, we start with our logic implementation. Starting with an entity, uh, pretty much called the registered custom registered client. So basically, this entity contains a couple of fits that practically we need for just to register a client. So these are basically the couple of fits we just need. Now with this, the other fits, but then again. This is just the base, so you can as well go ahead and provide implementation to include those other feed in your own aspect. So we look at the client ID, the client secret, the grant type. Now the grant type can be authorization code grant type. It can also be implicit grant type, or it can as well be cr client credentials grant type. So it just depends on what you are implementing. I've also defined the redirect URL as well as the client's name and the required proof key. So basically, this is a boolean value. So if it requires a um, proof key, that means we have to send a challenge alongside with uh, the initial request and the next request will come with the code verifier. Then we have to specify the token format as well. So the token format can be referenced or self-contained. In the case of self-contained, we have a token form in the form of JWT while for reference we have an opaque token you already know that and back to our client custom register client repository we've pretty much created a crud repository for our custom register client so this is just basically it and we're providing um two different methods the optional that returns a client that is being found by its id and then we also return a list of all the clients. So we are going to be querying this um, list of all clients to see what it returns to us. Okay. And finally, we have our client controller. So our client controller just defines two endpoints: client for the post mapping and client for the get mapping. That's just basically a single endpoint, but with two different HTTP, HTTP method calls. And one more thing is that inside of our security config class, I've defined our configuration in a way that all requests to slash clients would be permitted. Okay. And in order for us to achieve this, I have to turn off CSRF. So this is not the way to go about it. So definitely you want to have another um, server where you'll be able to register clients. Okay that um, server should be different from this authorization server but your authorization server should be able to read its clients from that particular database that the server communicates with so 
I just want you to take note of that. It's not a good practice to turn off CSROF, okay? But just for demonstration case, that is why I'm doing it because it will be much more faster. So with all of this stated, I can now run, okay? Before I run the application, our registered client repository, let us take a look at it. So it implements this registered client repository. So this is our implementation. Now we have provided necessary um, necessary configuration or overriding of the method that this registered client repository defines. So let's just take a look at it. So it defines just three methods. So we have the save method that registers a client. Um, find by ID and as well as defined by client ID. So that these are the three methods that this particular interface defines. So for us to implement this interface, we practically have to provide implementation for this three interface. So by default, Spring already has um, two implementations in place already. We have the in-memory registered client repository, and then we also have the JDBC registered client repository. Well, doing things with JDBC is quite um, hectic, so I just decided to provide my own implementation and we're making use of GPA for data querying. And let us take a look at the in-memory register client repository we've been making use of prior to this moment. So we have um, implementation of the three methods as well, and an additional one which is asset unique identifiers. And I, I think this private method is being used inside of for uh, Inside of one of this particular method, or perhaps it might be used inside of the constructor. So you can just check the the content of this in-memory client uh, repository out. So that's just it. Now let us take a look at our implementation one more time. So if you take a close look, you discover that we have a custom register client, which is true. But then again, this is not the this is not the default that Spring provides us with, okay? We have the register client. So we pretty much query that particular custom register client based on the ID. And then we map to our default register client, okay? And uh, we carry out some checks to check, the, to check the type, the token format, as well as we also define the client settings by determining this required proof key that has been defined inside of our client. So you just have to pretty much take a look at the source code. It's in the GitHub repository. You can just clone it or download it and go through the source code yourself. It will take a while for me to just start coding it and teaching at the same time. So that is why I wrote them all and just try to walk you through the implementations I've put in place. So now the next thing for us to do now is just pretty much start the application. And with the use of Postman, we will register a couple of um, clients. So right now, um, our, our application has started. So we want to send a request to our client endpoint, okay? So I did it previously, but I'll be doing it again. So I'll send this request. Let's see the response we are going to get. So we have a 200 OK with the details of our newly registered client. And then again, I can change this value to client underscore one, secret underscore one. And we want to pretty much change the client's name to client underscore one as well. And require proof key in this scenario, we set to true. And we still need to set authorization code as grant type self contained and we can just leave it self contained as is now the next one will be you making use of preference and our redirect to our URL should be 8082 so now I'll send and we still have everything we still have the details of this newly registered client so let me just show you the content of this registered client inside of the database so right here, let us clear everything we have. Let's see. Okay, not a command that is known, but I just query everything from our registered client. So I think it's not client and not custom registered client, but client. Okay, we have two clients, okay? 
uh, we have the client ID as client for the first one, and for the second one, we just have client underscore one. So this is just everything about persisting the details of our clients from the database. So let us take an example of how to um, send a request and get an, author an authorization code to be very sure that our um, persist client is working as expected. So back to Notepad, we want to copy one of these endpoints, starting with the first one. Let's see, we have proof key that's 881. So I just simply copy and in my browser, I'm going to paste it here. And then I'll send. So you yeah, have to log in. So I'll take my code, you have my code, control C. And back again to notepad, we just have to replace this value with our, our new code, control V. And now I just have to highlight the other of these ones. And create a new instance of git bash again. And I'll be calling to get our access token with this new instance. So when I have a uh, access token returned, okay, it's because we um, define the reference type as the self-contained. It's not just a um, reference. This is not an opaque token scenario. So just to show you another scenario, let us take a look at um, how to make use of an opaque token so instead of um self contain i'm going to change the value to reference okay um client to secret to client name should be two that's client underscore two um authorization code is okay and now our uri should pretty much be different so we have to change to 1990 and you see it will also be stored inside of our database so now i'll have to send now all of this is just to show you that the implementation works perfectly and we now have um, a way of dynamically getting and retrieving our registered clients from the database so now with a lot of this we are going to make a request again and then this time around we should get an opaque token okay so now we have to move to our application to get a look at all of the logs so this is um, practically the query that i banit is carrying out for us okay you can see select from custom register client the id the client id the client's name and so on and so forth every time we make a request using our client credentials now um, i'm right here because this particular call requires a challenge and a verifier so we start with the challenge at first so i'll just control c and um, back here we want to paste it here because it's an opaque token implementation so we want to paste our challenge here Control V and want to change this value to 1990. And I just pretty much highlight the whole of this. Control C again. And right in the browser, I'll paste it and then I'll send. So we have a code that has been sent back. And you can discover that this time around, our redirect url is localhost and it's running at port 1990 so you just see everything works as expected now just highlight the whole of this ctrl c 
right here let us see how we can get our bearer token so with um our code let's see where our code is located we paste this newly generated code and we also want to get our verifier from our application so this is the verifier i'll copy the whole of this verifier and it should be right yeah and finally we are running at um localhost 1919 so copy again control c and shift insert then i'll send so we have our access token close so we have our access token which is a bureau token but then this is an opaque token so that is basically everything to know about persisting your registered client so you just have to define an instance that pretty much mirrors the registered client and then you can map to the registered client after querying from the database so let us take a look at our log before i call it a day so we take a look and discover that we now also have additional log okay so that is just everything that has to do with um persisting our registered clients from the database so there are a couple of changes you can as well make you don't want to get your users directly from in memory you also want to create an instance of users where you can manage your user from the database but just to make things simplified i didn't do any of those but i just mainly focused on our registered client repository and for very good practice what we have to ensure is that we are not turning off csrof protection so you have to need you need to develop another server where you just register client probably with a jwt token for authentication so with that, we've basically come to the end of everything consigning authorization code grant type. In the next session, we are going to be looking at client credentials and we are going to see how it differs from authorization code grant type. And then after which we are going to be creating a resource server that will be practically what we just do. And then we see how to integrate a normal application with other registered authorization um, providers such as Google, Keyclock, uh, Microsoft in the coming days, but after our resource um, server implementation. So thanks for watching. I remain our code. Peace out. And until the next one, keep being your best self. So